I have to begin by uh, offering the disclaimer that my views today are my own and not, should not necessarily be taken as the views of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York or the Federal Reserve System. So uh, to answer your question, I always thought, even before the crisis, that the links between the financial sector and the real economy were, were important. Uh, I can recall debates at the time about whether there was a bank lending channel, whether bank the flow of credit was an independent channel of monetary policy. I always thought that it was, um, and I continue to believe that. The lesson or the way my views have evolved since the crisis is that um, I think it's important, as we did before the crisis, to keep looking to try to understand what the channels are. But I think the big lesson from the crisis is that we didn't understand what all the channels are. And you know, in, in a crisis, it's likely that we won't necessarily understand what all the channels are. So therefore, it's important that the system be robust against disruptions no matter where they come from. So some of the changes that have been enacted that uh, have resulted in higher capital at banks, more uh, actively managed liquidity, more robust risk management and risk identification, I think that's the, you know, the underpinnings that we need to be robust against whatever the particular channels are that link the financial sector to the real economy. Because at the end of the day, we don't regulate and supervise banks and the financial system because we care about banks and the financial system per se. We only do it because we care about the role that those institutions have on the real economy, on consumers and businesses. And that's, that's what is important here. So the first time we did stress testing in 2009, it was the midst of the financial crisis. And um, we really were um, almost making it up as we went along. We'd been doing some, um, what I would describe as uh, high level, back of the envelope, tabletop stress testing before that. But we really had to say to ourselves, you know, what is it we're going to do and how are we going to do it as we were doing it? So um, that was a challenge in and of itself. Um, as the stress testing regime has uh, evolved, um, we've gotten more sophisticated and more deliberate about what we're doing. And so I think some of the challenges that we've faced are things like balancing how precise and detailed um, do we want the models to be versus, um, you know, versus how easy they are to implement the, the burdens on the banks and on the supervisors in producing those models, um, that's been a challenge. I think as the program goes on and we get further and further from the financial crisis and the environment in which we did the first stress test, keeping it fresh, keeping it you know, um, innovative, not just getting very comfortable with what we're doing and the way we do things is a continuing challenge. A third um, related challenge is how to balance sort of um, the, the regularity of the stress test, their predictability so that the banks and the public know what to expect against um, you know, innovation that reflects new practice in the industry, um, new, um, new and emerging risks and how to keep that fresh. Um, and then you know, I think the final challenge is around transparency. Again, it's the same set of issues. Um, how do we convey to the public and to the banks what we're doing and how we do it but not reveal so much that um, it becomes so predictable and the banks can really optimize around what we're doing rather than thinking from the ground up about what their risks actually are. The way that we do supervisory stress testing right now, they're very much focused on individual institution. So you can imagine an environment that would generally be stressful the way you're describing for the banking system and then say what does that environment do to you know to the banks that are part of the stress test. So that um, gives a view that's, um, very, that's firm specific and very helpful in that regard. Looking across the banks we, we can get views of certain sectors of lending or of bank activity and say what happens to them. But the kind of sort of um, endogenous interactions where something happens to a bank and they react and that affects the markets and then, and then something happens in the markets and you go back again, that's not really a feature of the kind of stress testing we presently do. 
My own view is that it really takes a different kind of modeling approach, probably one that's higher level, more stylized. Um, the purpose of the stress testing we do now is really to understand the capital vulnerability of individual banks. And there the premium is on being precise and getting it right for each individual bank. I think for the sort of um, stress testing that looks at systemic and endogenous effects, you need something more stylized. There are some models out there. Um, the New York Fed, we, we have blog posts on an implementation of a model by uh, two of our economists that look at fire sale vulnerabilities. We have another model that looks at run vulnerabilities. But I think it's that kind of modeling um, that um, looks at a particular aspect of interactions and models it as a system is probably the best way forward. I think integrating everything into one Uber model of the whole world, that is the challenge going forward, uh, you know, facing not just the supervisory community, but the, you know, but the whole economics profession. So our, my view and our view at the New York Fed is that uh, it is critically important to have a staff of economists who are active researchers, who are engaging uh, with academic researchers, who are publishing in um, journals and generating their own research. We think that's important because at the end of the day, we have a research group at the New York Fed or in any reserve bank um, or central bank because we need to give policy advice on monetary policy, on financial stability, on uh, supervisory policy and about the financial services we, we provide. Um, and the best, our view is that the best way to get that policy advice is through economists who are very, very active researchers. That those who are the best researchers are in the best position to be giving that policy advice. So we view the research part of what the economists do as absolutely critical, both to inform themselves about what's going on at the frontier, but also to push the set of research questions um, that, uh, you know, that the profession works on and thinks about um, and thinks is important.